a very active signal here from our tropical models showing we could be dealing with another hurricane. Hi everybody, I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice. We just got rid of Debbie. Now we're looking at the possibility of another system forming. Our computer models, in particular the GFS and the European here, showing the potential for a strong hurricane forming in the Atlantic uh, as we go into next week. All eyes are on this because we were just rocked with Debbie, which took a while to get rid of. And as we move forward here, we're going to have to look out for the potential of another system. Now, Debbie brought six months worth of rain in a matter of three days to parts of South Carolina. We don't need to see anything tropical, much less a hurricane in the coming days. Let me unpack what's happening right now because the National Hurricane Center now having a medium chance that this system forms as we go throughout the next seven days. As we look at the satellite, there's a cluster of storms. And honestly, the waves that I'm seeing coming off the coast of Africa in the coming days do bode a chance uh, and the environment is there. The tropical energy and the water temperatures are such that anything that forms in this area would have a chance to become a big system in short order. So as we look at the average, I like to always start first with an average of all the computer models. This, the European average, showing as we go throughout the next several days, something tropical gets named near Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic going into uh, early next week. Then the models, the average of all the different European models, take it between Bermuda and the Outer Banks. Okay, so that's the early signals that we're seeing. But our operational computer models give us a little signal as to where uh, these really fine-tuned models want to try to take this. And I got to tell you, the European really knocked it out of the park with Debbie. It had it early. It had it fierce. Now, moving forward here, as we go into Sunday, Monday, there's not much to look at yet. But going into Monday, Tuesday of next week, we have something 40, 45 mile per hour wind, so possibly a tropical depression or a tropical storm. That would be moving toward the Windward Islands going into Tuesday night. Wave heights at this time frame, I'll show you in a moment, but it looks to expand out and quickly because most of our reliable computer models do show as it gets past Puerto Rico and in the warm waters of the Atlantic kind of rounding that bend to the Bermuda High, we could have a developing hurricane. This gets intense pretty quickly here toward the end of next week. And again, the next name on the list would be Ernesto. Shows it getting close to the Bahamas. Uh, then it spreads it up toward the north. This GFS American model from this morning takes it into a major hurricane. Uh, moves it toward the north with 120 to 140 mile per hour winds. The seas generated by this are great. So the Bahamas, even as close to the Carolinas and Florida, rip currents will be a concern late next week into next weekend. But we've got a developing big system here, according to the GFS and others, which I'll show you. This model takes it into a big system. We've got 120 to 140 mile per hour winds at the center of this. And that's where this model gets us to on the European model right here. So uh, strong, strong system showing up there. That's as far as the European gets us. What does the GFS say? Again, North Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, this gets it a little bit further to the west, then develops into a more compact system, but a fierce one nonetheless. We got 75 to 90 mile per hour winds there. It grows to 100 mile per hour winds going into next weekend. As we go into next Saturday night, Sunday, the GFS gets us a little bit deeper into the future. It's a model that goes up further. It shows 120 to 140 mile per hour winds like the uh, the, uh, G the European show. Uh, and it threads that needle between Bermuda and the Outer Banks going toward late next weekend into early next week, where it would continue to move away from the United States. But like I mentioned, let's show you the wave heights in this because they're quite fierce when you look at a system that could be that strong. Look at this. Uh, you've got wave heights 25, 30 feet near the center of this uh, as it gets close to the Bahamas next weekend. And then, even though it's several hundred miles out to sea, I want to let you know next weekend, the rip currents and the seas could be really rough from uh, Hilton Head Island, Savannah, up through Myrtle Beach into the Outer Banks as this massive system would be off the coast. And again, this is early, but I have a goal here to always give you an early heads up at what could be forming. I know, we got some fatigue here. We just got rid of Debbie. But folks, this is an active hurricane season, as we told you. 
And as I'm seeing you, and as I'm as I'm showing you here in just a moment, uh, we're going to be seeing a very active pattern, I think, over the next two to three weeks. But look at the wave heights generated by this. Even though it stays away from the United States, according to this model, not saying that's exactly going to happen, but uh, it generates some serious waves. Um, and I want to show you the Canadian model right there in lockstep with its European and, and, and American uh, brother and sister there. So uh, it keeps it a little closer to Bermuda. But again, we're talking about a cat four uh, from this Canadian model. So what you're having here, just to conclude, uh, wrapping it into a bow for you here, is all of our reliable computer models develop a major hurricane. A lot of them keep that away from the United States. It's early. We're looking at pattern recognition here. We're looking at what are the models trying to tell us. And what they're telling us here, and what I can tell you is that from the global hazard standpoint, this is something that NOAA puts out um, every, uh, every week. And you can see, I'm going to take it out right here and kind of show you like that. I think you can see it a little bit better. You can see that uh, when you look at a global hazard standpoint, the week of August 14th through the 20th, uh, we've got that same area that we're seeing that develop highlighted here. But then the following week, the 21st through the 27th, uh, NOAA has the entire Caribbean, uh, Gulf of Mexico, and that main development region of the Atlantic highlighted it at a 20 to 40% chance of additional tropical development. Again, that's not gospel, but what it's telling us here is that we've got a very active pattern moving forward here that does bring the potential for major hurricanes, okay? So if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing, like this video, and let me know where you're watching from right now. That helps me tailor this forecast to you. We know a lot of you uh, may have interests along the coast and you wanna stay informed as to what's happening. What I can tell you is we gotta stay dialed into the tropics. Even though Debbie is leaving, it's going to leave us with a lot of questions moving forward here as to what forms after it.